you also wrote an article uh, about a 2025 mock draft. So obviously Browns have their first round pick right now. It's, it's pretty darn high. I, I believe it's third uh, overall Patriots and Carolina ahead of them. Um, so here's who you had in, the, in a 2025 mock draft. You had them taking Shadur Sanders, uh, quarterback from Colorado first. You have them taking an offensive tackle. Can't argue that they need that uh, um, from Arizona. Third round, uh, a wide receiver, another thing that uh, the Browns need, and, and then in the fourth, uh, a tight end. So all those boxes checked. Um, the whole Sanders thing, uh, could you see them taking – you look at him, he, he's an intriguing talent. It's another sideshow, and, and we've had a lot of sideshows uh, recently. Yeah, I think that's the – how do you not let the past affect your decision-making, right? When you are evaluating talent, talent, your goal is to understand what is the talent on the field, what is the personality, what is the – how is he as a teammate, all of those kind of things. The rest of it is just noise, right? The rest of it is is stuff that should not matter. Fans should not matter. Media – should not matter, right? Those are things that should not matter for good quality teams. And so I think they are not going to let the past, again, I am assuming Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, uh, at least those two, maybe Paul D. Podesta, they're not going to allow the Johnny Manzels of the world and now the Deshaun Watsons to really dictate how they make decisions. They are going to make decisions on what is best for the Cleveland Browns. Would it shock me given Deshaun Watson's contract, if they traded out of that pick? Absolutely not. Because again, Watson, if he's on the, if he's on the roster, there's a lot of money to sit. Right. And so, uh, but I think Shador Sanders from, I am not delved deep into any of my quarterback evaluation. You see a lot of the skills that will translate arm talent, ability to read defenses, um, quickness in the pocket, those kind of things that you really are going to like. Cam Ward probably is the highest rated quarterback right now. Uh, at least based on his performance, but there's a lot of other variables that will go into that age, those kind of things, uh, different systems, those kind of things. So right now, Shador Sanders makes sense for the Browns, uh, given Watson's injury uh, and given their need at quarterback, he is the guy. And I could see Jameis Winston being kind of the mentor type and sign for another year. Yeah, I, I, that does make sense. Uh, what do you like about the tackle from Arizona? Savanea. You know, to be, you know, to be really honest, he's a player who has some zone read, or I'm sorry, some zone blocking history. Uh, so that's really, really helpful. And at this point, you know, second round, even if it's high in the second round, really tough to find really good tackles after the first round. Like that's just historically speaking, it is a very low percentage left tackle, right tackle that are available after the first round. There are some, obviously. Um, but here you have a player who, might be a more of a right tackle than a left tackle could slide into guard. And at this point with Joe Batonio's age, um, I really just want a player who's going to be really, really good. Uh, a lot of similarities uh, to Batonio when he was coming out left tackle uh, at Nevada. Uh, I think he can play right tackle mostly, whether that means Dewan Jones slides over to left tackle uh, or in the zone blocking scheme, you do actually free up your tackles a little bit to not have to be that top end, Six 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 seven long arm player because you really want your tackles to be able to get out and move more than what they're kind of doing this year, which is a struggle, which is kind of catch the blockers and try to stop the blockers just with size, length, and technique. Movement really allows some of these type of players to excel. 